Destiny 2 I never knew you in life. And to be the completely honest, way. I barely remember Destiny 1, which was released on 2014. And do you know Something why? Well, because together. this game didn't have anything that much appealing to me to be to be remembered as a, an awesome game. I actually forever. even enjoyed Bioshock more. But still, all the advertisement campaigns got to me and I was looking forward for Destiny 2. And this time, they put a lot of effort into advertisement. They hired celebrities, they made fans do YouTube videos. I mean, everyone was talking about it before the game came out. And I mean, I went and bought Collector's Edition which had, you know, some stickers in it and uh, three pieces of shit. And by this shit, I mean uh, three ornaments of uh, uh, Hunter, Titan and Warlock. But getting back to the game, I really wish that they would have just uh, put half the effort into developing the game than advertisement campaigns. But let's jump right into it. What is Destiny 2? Well, it's a first-person shooter that incorporates role-playing and massive multiplayer online game elements. Game has its own universe, its own world, I mean even couple of worlds, and a, a really awesome lore. There is also a possibility to play against your friends and other people, other players, like PvP. And again, there are free classes that you can choose from. Hunter, Warlock and Titan. You have to level them up individually, one by one, by doing ordinary missions, campaign missions or just online missions. Plus adventures and other shit. Your maximum level with each character is 20. After that, the game isn't counting levels anymore. It's counting public events that you have completed. So now your level becomes the number of times you've taken part in public events. And the only reason to continue playing is basically to get better gear. Each gear item will give you power, and your maximum power can be 300. So the more closer you get to 300 power with your average gear setup, the better you'll be. And hitting 300 is not easy, it requires some sort of special quests and a lot of determination. And there is no reason to chase your 300 power with all three characters, just choose one of them. But if you want your gold trophies, you have to complete at least a couple of uh, storyline missions uh, and uh, hitting level 20 and then doing some shit uh, to get the trophy. So back to the plot itself. Humanity's last safe city has fallen to an overwhelming invasion force led by Gaul, the imposing commander of the brutal Red Legion, and he looks like a turtle on steroids. He has stripped the city's guardians from their power and forced the survivors to flee. Welcome to a world without light. Thus you shall venture to the mysterious unexplored worlds of our solar system to discover an arsenal of weapons and devastating new combat abilities. To defeat the Red Legion and confront Gaul, you must reunite human scattered heroes, stand together and fight back to reclaim your home. But the game's main story focuses on the light. What happens What's when it gets now? taken from the Guardians? Yeah, the it's the only the way friendly, Guardians sir. can right? be resurrected after right, death. Right. So the light protects all right. them all. But Big Fat Emperor of Red Legion is not giving Jack shit about it. 
he just wants to abuse the power of the light to his own good. Okay. But the fun part is yeah, that seconds the after the disastrous conquest, the the you, the chosen Goodbye. one, will get your light back. This is why we were led here. I haven't been as close to the traveler's light since. Do you feel it? Hold on to your helmet. So that's it, that's the plot. And what comes after that? Well, endless hours of grinding. Fucking grinding! It, it kind of felt like a chore going through all those dungeons where basically all your enemies will respawn three times. Luckily the nice cutscenes and a couple of jokes here and there kept me amused. But right now, I'm completing the game for the third fucking time just for the trophy. And it's just... Ugh, when does it end? And even skipping the cutscenes doesn't help because then I'm back to grinding again. At least the fighting system or fighting mechanism is awesome. I, I like to shoot, I like that headshots count. Uh, I like that guns have their different abilities and uh, and ranges and speed vary and it, it's it's actually awesome. Most of the missions feel recycled, most of the enemies are recycled. So thank heavens that the, the shooting is still fun. Well, there are a couple of races of enemies like uh, Gabal, Fallen, Hive, well Taken, Vex. But in the game, you will mix them all up, they're all enemies. Sometimes you see them shooting at each other, but as soon as you will arrive there, all the gun barrels are aimed at you. It's like they have some sort of conspiracy against you. Each time you will arrive there, it's like, oh, let's make peace, there is bigger enemy amongst us. Fuck. So most of the time I discovered that you can just run past them till your checkpoint arrives. Slow. Amanda, the hive have infected everything. But let's talk about customization and weapons and armor you will accumulate over time. Yes, over time you shall receive a tons and tons of armor and weapons. And my main advice is don't get attached to any of them. You will dismantle each of those items like 15 minutes later when you find better gear. That means there is no point for customization whatsoever. Yes, I get the point when you hit power 300 and you can't get any higher, then, then I see the point of customization. But this shit only happens like 70 hours into the gameplay. What the fuck? Why am, am I sitting on those customization items till then? Fuck, I will get bored of the game before I can use them. It's quite a similar story with weapon modifications. But those actually come in handy, so they, they have a decent point to be there. In the farm, you will meet vendors who sell weapons and armors as well. But there's no point of visiting them whatsoever, because everything they sell is shit. Everything's for sale for Glimmer, your in-game currency that your, well, your wallet is always full of because you can't use it. So there I am running around with 99,999 Glimmers. Useless shit. So about the characters. Well, as I mentioned earlier, there are three types of characters. There's Hunter, there's Titan and there's Warlock. And my personal opinion comes from many, many hours of gameplay. And that is, there is no point of choosing Warlock nor Titan, because they can't jump. I literally spent hours of trying to clear some easier jumps just with those Warlock glide abilities. Fuck, that is fucking ridiculous. Hunter has a double jump that you can gain some height. 
but when you're playing main missions and you can't jump from point A to point B where you need to go, you're totally screwed. Here's a section I actually cleared by luck. You see? I mean, I spent half an hour just to get to the other side. I've never been so angry at game developers. And that's, that's from the heart. At some point, I felt that I've been, you know, traveled back in time to NES games. So I'm really happy that I chose Hunter as my main character. So, uh, a little about uh, graphical aspects as well. Well, overall, the game looks good. The weapons look great, but everything else in the background, uh, like the sea, like the waves underneath us, they look horrible. Some parts of the maps are just filled with vast emptiness, but I don't mind, because they're trying to open up the map as much as they can to make it bigger. Although it's an issue when you don't have your sparrow to fly around with. So that means majority of the game in the beginning is running or walking. Even though you can teleport uh, closer to your objective, you will still find yourself walking and running around a lot. That takes a shitload of time sometimes. But what will really piss you off is seeing other players flying past your walking ass. You'll start wondering where the fuck did they get their sparrows? I want one! With tears in your eyes, you're left behind only smelling their farts. But no worries, you will get your sparrow as well when you hit level 20. Texture wise, game is okay, it's totally playable and the graphics are not worse than normal MMORPGs. But what really painfully punctured my anus was this part here. Those freaky ass doors everywhere. What kind of fucked up textures are those? Are those doors to hell? Yeah, just lazy. Just fucking lazy lazy lazy. I'm sure that game developers used just prefabricated walls and instead of uh, covering up the doors with normal textures they just filled it up with this liquidy liquidy shit. Let's call it liquid shit. <sighs> Anyways let's backtrack a bit. It kind of sounds like I'm being too harsh on this game, especially when it has a big fan base. So what can I tell you? It's actually a good game when you're not aiming for trophies, when you're just aiming for fun and you're only choosing one character that you can make the storyline complete and uh, have a little bit of fun. You can also join a clan and you can complete raids with other people plus you can play against other people which is the most funnest part of the game. It's actually even more fun than Call of Duty Online because you can't be killed in one shot or two shots you will have actually have to work for your kills. And yes I've had trouble in gameplays I have grindy, grindy days and I have days where actually uh, Destiny servers are offline. Uh, remembering those I actually feel sad for, but it's good for the game. So, so I, I have to rate it and I mean it's definitely better than Agents of Mayhem. So I think I will score this game 6 out of 10. That's fair. I'm Silly Lamas and thanks for watching, till next time!